outside again today, and here we are. <clears throat> so, the crowd may not look too big upstairs, but there's quite a few downstairs this morning, too. So, we are, we're transitioning, but uh, and we, we're not using the basement anymore. Um, and so, I did, if anybody walks through there, if we need to, it's all set and ready to be put back up if we need it. But, I did take the screen down because it's, that screen is older than me. <laughs> it's been here forever, but it's a good old screen, and it's a big one. <laughs> I mean, it would be a very expensive screen to replace. So I took it down because it's been up since um, July of last year, and I thought maybe those springs in there might have needed a rest. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's just down and turned up. So. Uh, announcements, we do have communion today, so if you did not pick up communion, just uh, let us know, and we can get you that probably during the first hymn. Uh, we do communion during the, the first Sunday of every uh, month and on special occasions, and communion is open to all. So just uh, so you're aware of that. Uh, also, next week is Mother's Day. We have a little uh, gift and thing to honor mothers and mothers to be here, mothers who want to be, and so forth. But hopefully we will be outside next week. You said that last week. I said that last week, too. Last we are closer, though, thanks to George, who came out Sunday, or Friday, whatever day it was, Friday. And we set everything up and had it all sitting back there, and it all got moved over to the corner this morning. And then we'll just, we'll just but we know what we're doing now. <laughs> the only difficult part of all of this is crawling down and sticking your head behind this thing to unplug the microphone because you can't see anything. And you can't, when you're old like me, you can't get your bifocals adjusted enough with the flashlight to see what you're plugging <laughs> your stuff into. So it's just, it, it, you know, <clears throat> the struggle is real, that's all I can tell you. But, yeah. <laughs> That'd be fine, but actually I was lazy at sitting on top. I didn't put it back into the whole thing. I thought, well, if we need it, I'll just pull it off there really quick. So um, we are also having a, a, a memorial service for Paul Ray Frederick this morning. And uh, welcome to all the Frederick family. It's nice to see everybody back. I grew up with a lot of you here, so it's nice to see you here. Anything else that I have forgotten? I know there's some birthdays here. When did it become May? Yesterday. Well, yeah, no, I asked for that one. But it just it just seems like, I don't know, like the spring has just went really fast. Yeah. So to today, Bernie Schramm has a birthday today. Yeah. Uh, Mackenzie Daniel has a birthday today. I don't see Mackenzie, but tell Mackenzie. Tomorrow. tomorrow, that's right, tomorrow. Uh, Christian Mastro Piero has a birthday Tuesday. And Ruth Sander and Dale Kutcher have a birthday on the 5th, and then the next one will be next Sunday. So we can sing Happy Birthday to Bernita. We did last week, but we'll do it again this week. She taught me that, so every once in a while I say a little prayer to St. Anthony to you to, to help me find something, because I am notorious for putting away things like tickets to the Fox Theater that cost a small fortune, and mm -hmm. we couldn't find them. Never and we missed the, the show. Because we, we couldn't find the tickets. Yeah, we couldn't find the tickets we until we remodeled our bedroom and pulled out the chest, and they slid down behind us. <laughs> the way it is. Anything else? Good to see Lenny and Max back. They've been out traveling. <clears throat> they look healthy and tan and all that. And some Grand Canyon and... Payne uh, Forest, or Payne Desert, that's right, Forest. Did they mistake you with the tree? They counted the leaves. Anything left in that country, Payne Forest, there's a lot. People were picking up 
so many super things. Yeah, they want to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so many people were carrying out pieces yeah. of the petrified boards <laughs> that they're wondering if the petrified boards left. So, but just kidding, Max, you know that. I, just, <laughs> I do it because I know you would give it right back to me. <laughs> so, do you? I don't know if this is time or not, but people that don't get Facebook, Macy's. I was going to mention that oh, later, but I would want to mention it now. Macy is a graduating senior at uh, Southeast Missouri State University. And uh, while I'm thinking of it, if we have graduates, Please let me know about them, because Gabe Meyer will be graduating from Mulberry High School too, and that's like unbelievable. Gabe, okay, but Gabe is doing that. But Macy's senior show starts is it tomorrow? Uh, it starts today through Friday, but her reception thing is Friday from five to seven. Five to seven at the River Campus, and if you don't know, just go down to the River Campus and go through the main doors, and you'll see the directions. She's an art major, art education major, and uh, so she. Uh, has her, one of the things they have to do is a senior show. And I think her specialty is printmaking. Mm -hmm. Printmaking. So, okay. good job, Nixon. So we just gotta get them all here so we can do a little honor for them sometimes. So but we'll shoot for that maybe the Sunday after Mother's Day. So. Oh, she gets her art teaching at Jackson. She's being interviewed. She's being interviewed this week. Got, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Part of the sermon this morning. So. <laughs> Anything else? Our grandson Joshua was with the Corps of Engineers in Fort Laredo, and he got a big promotion to oversee the new hospital they are building. And uh, he got his the rank was up to 15, and he's number 13 out of the 15. So he's got a big responsibility. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to be married to his cell phone for about five years. <laughs> 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 Well, that's wonderful news. We're so, proud of and we have a few more celebrations, but I'm going to hold those for the prayer time. So, join with me for the call of worship. If you stand, please. And I will tell you, I did not plan this, but for the Frederick family, for Paul Ray's funeral, I used the shepherd. But he was the shepherd. I did not plan that this would be today. I just wrote this, and I had this. I've been doing these just separate. That way, if the family needs to change, I don't have to rerun the bulletins. I can just slide them in. But uh, it was like you were supposed to be here today if you look at the call to worship and the invitation and so forth. Open the gates. The shepherd is coming. We, we hear his voice. All of us are Leading us to green pastures. No stranger's voice will we follow. We follow only the one who brings us home. One door, one flock. One fold, one shepherd, open the gate, the good shepherd comes. Bow your heads for the invocation, please. Almighty God, who sent Jesus, the good shepherd, to gather us together, receive the praises of your thankful people this day, as we offer ourselves to you that our lives might be reordered to meet the days ahead. May we not wander from your flock, but follow where he leads us, knowing his voice and staying near, until we are safely in your fold. To live with you forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Join me in singing Savior like a shepherd lead us.
my cousin of Rosemary Berry, Kenneth Owendorf, uh, passed away earlier this week. His was up, he lived up in northern Illinois. Uh, Randy Sander told me everything that was wrong with his knee this morning that he found out, and basically he tore his knee up. <laughs> um, like a torn meniscus, a partial this or that, and a partial ill, and I said, so you tore your knee up. So it was, that's what I could keep up with and keep in here until I could get upstairs. Um, please keep uh, Alex Powderly, a uh, student of Pam's, in your prayers, and keep, uh, we mentioned this, some of us were talking before church, that there was a bad wreck just north of Oak Ridge last night, and uh, the, the person that was uh, killed in it was a student at Cape Center High School. So keep their school in your prayers. They haven't released the name yet, but uh, uh, she's a sophomore, did you say? And okay, sophomore. Uh, so they airlifted two, Susan and I were looking, they airlifted one adult and one child to San Luis and the rest were transported to San Francis, but uh, it appeared to be a pretty bad, pretty bad accident. Um, keep Whitney Asher in your prayers this week. Uh, Whitney's having surgery. She has Cushing syndrome, which if you remember many years ago, they tested me for for several years, uh, for several months. And so it's not pleasant that she's having surgery at Barnes. That's a, Barnes is a pretty good place. <laughs> we were very pleased. So best wishes on that. Uh, keep uh, the Loman family, Jeannie and Ron and Josephine and Jennifer have all had COVID. Uh, they were exposed last week. Jeannie called me and said we're not coming because Jennifer was exposed at work. And I called them Friday morning, I guess it was. And Jeannie sounded very, very sick. She's been very sick. They had the respiratory and intestinal. And, you know, Jeannie's pretty tough. They're, they're, they're pretty tough people. But she said she one day she just barely got out of bed and put her foot in front of another event. She was glad that Josephine's old enough to take care of herself. <laughs> <laughs> when you're that sick, it's like every man for themselves. But they, they have been they have been sick with it. Um, of course, they won't be here for a while until they're past that. Uh, Pam mentioned this morning our next door neighbor or former next door neighbor, Jeannie Craigs, who lives at the villa, has been exposed and is in well the, lock, the whole villa the whole villa is in lockdown. The villas are in lockdown again then. So. Um, at least that's what Miss Jeannie said on Facebook. That's what Miss Jeannie said on Facebook. So, um, a couple of uh, happy things. Anybody else have anything before we move to the happy stuff? A couple of happy things. Uh, the drums mentioned their grandson, uh, Wyatt Licks. Joshua. Joshua Licks. Wyatt's the April brother. He never keeps okay. straight. Okay. Uh, Lydia had a little honor this week. She was asked to uh, show up on a Zoom meeting, and she was honored as the outstanding history student for Southeast Missouri State University for the 2021 year. Uh, so you know, she gets a little black and so forth. Uh, another little piece of news that I had no idea on, but uh, Don and Annalie Hawes' great-grandson, Caleb Johnson, was drafted by the Chicago Bears in the NFL draft the other night. <laughs> didn't know that was your great grandson. <laughs> didn't watch it, but still didn't know it. <laughs> so, but congratulations to them. So that's something to be very proud of. We're very proud of you. Yep. So I have to look him up now to see who he is. So it's always, it's always kind of neat to know your one degree separation from someone famous. <laughs> you know, he went uh, to Houston Baptist College. He went to Houston Baptist. Okay? And as they said, Macy's culmination project is this week. Uh, I'm planning to try to get over and see if you know, good Lord willing and the creeks don't rise, but if you've seen the, yeah. if you've seen the forecast for tomorrow, the, the creeks may rise. Yeah. Uh, so. Just hopefully not in St. Louis. Yeah, hopefully not in St. Louis. Yeah, uh, so. recently. Uh, anyone else have anything good to share? Yeah, I got invited up to an outdoor barbecue yesterday to celebrate my granddaughter's birthday. I got the present. I'm going to be great grandpa. Aww. Aww. Good for you. Okay. I was so shocked that you got invited. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to raise your suit this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't laugh in church working, you laugh. So that's that wonderful news. Which grandchild is expecting? Say what? Which grandchild is expecting? Uh, Kelsey. Kelsey. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Her. It's Steve's daughter. And Steve's doing okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, you talk about the virus. For three days, he didn't get off the couch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
Also, that makes me think of somebody that I'm trying to think of his name now. His dad had an excavating business because I talked to him the other day. His son was, uh, it was somebody else would know it when I hit his son. Burke. Burke. Yeah, Marcus Burke. Uh, got out of the hospital about two weeks ago after 158 days in St. Louis in the hospital. And he was a healthy, I mean, he ran an excavating business, and I talked to his dad because we contacted him about doing some excavating work. And he uh, was telling me the whole story. His dad fell and broke his leg, too. So <laughs> it's just it's not been a good time in their family. But anyone else we need to remember? I got good news Friday. Um, I've been waiting since the beginning of January to find out that I did get approved for the $2,300 anti-rejection medicine being sent to me without cost for a year. So. Thank God. Yeah, that's a little way off our shoulders. Every year you have to go through the approval process, but yeah, it's $2,300 a month for one medicine. Wow. You know, it takes a lot of others. So. <laughs> and you work with yourself. Let's go to God and pray this morning. Father, we come to you on a, on a drab day, on a day that we're here to remember some people, on a day we're here to, to laugh and enjoy each other's company, a day that the sun shines bright inside through your son, who protects us, who leads us, who guides us like the shepherd, who takes care of us, who comes back for us, and who leads us wherever we may need to go. Father, we continue to pray that you'll be with all those that we mentioned who are in times of sorrow or need. We pray that you'll be with those who are facing surgeries and facing difficult times. We pray that their recovery will be swift and that things will return to normal as much as possible. We thank you for all the things and blessings that we've had in our lives. If, we're sitting, if we sit back and really look, we're truly a blessed people, people who have so much more than other people in this world. Just so thankful and happy that we can enjoy those blessings. Father, we pray for each and every one that we've mentioned. We come this morning also asking forgiveness for our sins, knowing that we sometimes sin without knowing it, and sometimes we sin and we know it. And we come asking that you'll forgive us for our sins, knowing that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. We ask all these things in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Children's sermons on my phone, the phone's over there. So, I'm trying to think of what it was now. I'm in the brain, so you're going to see that. Getting old, forgetful. Yes, I am. <laughs> you might like dumb dumb suckers. Yes, mm-hmm. they make you dumb dumb. They make you dumb dumb? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of dum-dum? I always like those little dum-dum suckers. Those little I like root beer. Root beer? Cream soda. Cream soda was cream. my favorite. Like I like the cream soda. Bubble gum. Bubble gum? Some of you acting like you never had dum-dum sucker. <laughs> <laughs> They're cheap. You get them at Halloween. <laughs> and the bank. And the bank. Yes, they used to get them at the bank. Anybody ever have a mystery one? Yes. Yeah. Did you ever have a mystery uh, airhead? Mm-hmm. Yes. What flavor was it? White. White. <laughs> White. It's different every time. Well, you don't, you're not supposed to know what flavor it is. You don't know what flavor it is. That's right. It's a mystery. You know why it's a mystery? It's the leftovers. It's actually, actually mysteries are mixes. They, you're absolutely, it's as they mix one flavor into the other. Before one, be, like if they're mixing root beer and cherry, as they mix, you get a little, a little of both, so they cut those off and make those mystery flavors. <laughs> so, anybody ever been around people, though, who are giving out candy? And you know how the teacher says, do you have enough for everybody? Yeah. Okay? okay? Tammy and Mike have heard that a couple times. Uh, but do you have enough for everybody? Well, 
Well, have you ever been in a situation though where people were handing things out and you didn't get one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. no? You're lucky. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're an adult and everybody else got a raise and you didn't get one. Everybody else got one of these you didn't get one. Well, you know what? The good news is, is when you ask and when you come to Christ, guess what? He's there for everybody. Okay? Even though sometimes he's like the mystery flavors. You don't know he's there. And you don't understand how he's there. But he is there. It's a mystery. Until later, sometimes you see how things have worked. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Sometimes things are a mystery. Let's say trusted old lady of yours. No, I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. Paul Ray Frederick, 90 of Jackson, passed away Friday, January 29th, 2021, at the Lutheran home in Cape Girardeau. He was born May 9th, 1930, on a family farm north of Jackson, son of Ray Henry and Elsie Ruby Rapp Frederick. Paul R. and I'm going to have to say Paul Ray because I can't. Paul R. just doesn't flow for me. Paul Ray, and I have a, I'm going to tell you this story now. When your mom was in the hospital, okay, Dave Schaffner was going to go see her. And he called me and he said, Well, what hospital is she in? And I said, She's in San Francisco. And he said, You sure? And I said, Yeah, I was just there this morning. And they said, Well, I called and they said, There's no Maxine Fredericks there. And I said, That's because her name's not Maxine. <laughs> and he said, What? And I said, well, Oh, I think her name's Wanda. <laughs> I never knew that. I didn't either until I was like 40. <laughs> so, but, uh, see, I don't know that she ever used that name, did she? She I, didn't want you to know it was Wanda. She did. I, 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 she, yeah, I don't. I mean, nobody ever knew it was Maxine. So, Paul Ray and Maxine Webb were married March 25th, 1950. They proceeded, she preceded him in death April 21st, 2017. Paul was a 1947 graduate of Oak Ridge High School. He worked as a farmer all his life, having purchased his first farm in 1951. For many years, he bought and sold cattle, and up until recently, could be found every Tuesday at the Fruitland Sale Barn. Paul received special recognition from Jackson J.C.'s as Outstanding Young Farmer of the Year, and he could do custom bailing and combining for others in the area, and he custom combined for us for many, many years, along with Randy. Yeah, with Randy there, Randy. Custom combine over at our place for so, a long time. Paul was a lifelong member of St. John's United Church of Christ, having served on the church council for many years, was former church treasurer, and helpful in many other ways at the church. Paul was instrumental in forming the Jackson Trail Riders Club and had served on the co op service center board for many years. Loving survivors include six children. Paula Frederick of Cape Girardeau, Gary and Gail Camp of Burgerville, Randy and Yvonne Frederick of Jackson, Patty and Ronnie Asher of Jackson, Sandy and the late Mark Weiss Frederick of Fort Myers, Florida, Tammy and Jim Mueller of Jackson, 10 grandchildren, Laura and Chris Daniel, Renee Asher, Ryan and Whitney Asher, Chris and Cassie Camp, Kent and Alex Frederick, Erin and Kyle Weiss, and Chase Mueller. Three great-grandchildren, Mackenzie and Grace and Daniel and Adley Asher. He was preceded in death by his parents, his wife Maxine of, six, of 67 years, and a brother, Doug Fredericks. This was read at Paul Ray's funeral, if the, something he wanted read or some of the family wanted read. But this is Paul Harvey. So God created a farmer, and on the eighth day, God looked down on his plan in paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the field, milk cows again, eat supper, and then go to town and stay past midnight for a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to call hogs, tank and tankers, machinery, come home hungry, have to wait lunch until his wife's done feeding, visiting ladies, and tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn coat and watch it die. Then dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of haywire, feed sacks and shoe scraps, 
and who, and who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40 hour week by Tuesday noon. Then Canaan from tractor back put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds and to get stopped in the midfield and race to help when he sees the first smoke from a farmer's place. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and he fails, yet gentle enough to tame lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for any hour to splint the broken leg of a metal ark. It had to be somebody who plowed deep and straight and not cut corners, somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie the fleece, and strain the milk, and replenish the self-feeder, and finish a hard, works week, a hard week's work with a five-mile drive to church. Somebody who'd, who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of shearing, who would laugh and then sigh and then reply with smiling eyes, when his son says he wants to spend his life doing what he dad, his dad does. So God made a farmer. I thought that fit Paul Ray very appropriately. Along with a lot of other people here in this church. I thought of a lot of people as I read that. So. If you'd stand with me, we'll sing Trust in Away. <laughs> You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. 
You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and birds and animals in the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now, most of you know I work with student teachers. And Carol used to work with student teachers at one time too, but I work with student teachers. And I have 12 this semester. I've seen some of them in person a couple times. Most of them have been online, but uh, next fall we will go back to kind of a, a, a mix. There will be some online, some the first and last at least visits will be on in person. That's the way it's looking. And maybe a couple of the ones in between will be on in person or online. You may think one of the hardest parts about working with student teachers, though, is, is like having to criticize or correct them. Okay? Give them constructive criticism. You may think it's getting them to turn things in on time. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a little bit lenient on that because I know sometimes it's, some of these kids are working 30, 20, 30 hours a week and teaching full time too. And so I'm a little bit more lenient than maybe I should be. But as long as they get it in in a general time slot, I don't get too caught up. I want their lesson plans by a certain time. But their reflections and stuff, if they get a little little behind on. Sometimes these kids are working pretty hard. Some of them are trying to support themselves and do this, so they're working a lot. <clears throat> you may think it's just getting them through the first true experience in the real world. <clears throat> the hardest thing, I think, is helping them deal with the rejection that sometimes comes. Okay? This year I had two young ladies, and I have two young ladies who taught the exact same subject in the exact same school. They both interviewed for two positions, the exact same two positions. One was offered both of them, the other was offered neither of them. <clears throat> so I was very happy for one, but the other four girl I felt really bad for. And all of us at some point have wanted a job or something that we really wanted and we didn't get. <clears throat> and rejection hurts. The good news is the one girl that did get the job has an interview this week too. So. <clears throat> We're going to say a prayer for her. Okay? But I went out and talked to her and put her through a little mock interview and, and tried to help her along a little bit because she was just really, really down. And I thought to myself, out of 12, why did they have to be in the same stinking subject area in the same stinking building? <laughs> Couldn't one of them have been in Cape and then they'd never known anything about it? <clears throat> but they were right there. Okay? Rejection is one of those giants that all of us have to deal with. And we have to be careful because rejection can truly change how we view life. Sometimes it's like a cold wind that follows you around. You just feel like you're always down and always out. It's nothing that's ever going to go your way. Everybody hates me. Nobody likes me. Everything's going to go eat lines. Remember that, okay? <laughs> you haven't heard that old saying. Often, re rejection will fester over time, and it riddles us with feelings of insecurity, insignificance, a sense of abandonment. I just want to go to bed and pull the covers up over my head and not look out for three days or whatever. Okay. Rejection comes in different ways, though. Sometimes it's like Mount Everest in front of us. It's raw. It's inconquerable. You don't see how you're going to get over it. But sometimes it comes in the form of a little seed that gets planted. And over time, it takes root, and the roots spread, and the little seed pops up, and it becomes a plant. And before you know it, your whole life is kind of being dominated by this giant plant in your life. And the sad thing is, if you deal with weeds, as you know, weeds never come in one. <laughs> okay? You don't get one dandelion in your yard. <laughs> you get a bunch of dandelions in your that's, that's kind of happening. And I don't know about you, but I can look out and the lark that looks so pretty, and the next morning I look out and think, where are those 395 dandelions coming from? <laughs> They're everywhere. Because that's how things work. That seed can have a family, in other words. Okay? And sometimes, well, there's two different sides to rejection. One side is the insecurity, the low self-esteem, feeling inferior, and self-hatred, just not liking yourself. And there's another side, which I see very prevalent in young people today. 
driven by social media. I will tell you this, it's driven by social media. And that is the need to succeed for perfection in all things, winning at all costs to be an overachiever. Because what people fail to see sometimes on those social media posts is how many times they recorded that to get it to where it's at. They make it look like something just happened. That's why I like those flop ones sometimes. You know, like the, the cake where it's supposed to look like this and it turns out looking like I made it. You know, Because <laughs> it shows that people are human. We're, we're not always perfect. But we, we live in a world where things are projected as perfect a lot. Rejection can be two sides of a very dysfunctional family. If you're told you're worthless, then you're going to think you're very low. You're going to think very low of yourself. But the other side of it is if you're told that you should always perform well, that you always perform well no matter what, you can also be driven to overachieve. And in trying to overachieve, you end up rejecting yourself. It's a vicious cycle. Everyone's battle comes in some four ways. We all have. So let's look at that scripture from Samuel. <clears throat> when Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the man, he burned with anger and asked, Why have you come down here, and with whom did you leave those few sheep in this wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now there's some rejection in that scripture if you read it. Okay? Who's being rejected? David. But Eliab actually is feeling some real rejection, and he's lashing out. But to get to understand that, we've got to go back and review a little bit. Okay? So if you don't know the whole story, Samuel was a prophet appointed by God to appoint a king for the Israelites. The Israelites had been ruled by judges. That's the book of Judges. I don't to do that. That's the book of Judges in the Bible. And they had a series of judges, and the Israelites didn't like it. They wanted a king, like everybody else, and so God basically said, be careful what you wish for, but I'll give you a king. And they made Saul king. Okay? So Saul was king. He wasn't doing the best of jobs. So Samuel comes along and is told to go to Desi's family and look for the next king. Okay? Now keep in mind, Saul's sitting on the throne and he has an heir, at least one we know of, Jonathan, his son, who has happened at some point to be David's best friend. Okay? But so Saul and then Jonathan, they're all in line. They're, Saul's king, Jonathan's in line, and Samuel is going to go pick another king. Sound like a recipe for disaster? Well, it's going to be. Okay? And before we even get to that, Samuel is told to go to Jesse's family. And if you don't think about this, but from Christmas from the line of Jesse will come Jesus. Okay? This, this is Jesse, the guy. Okay? And he has eight sons. The oldest being a guy named Iliad. Hmm, does that sound familiar from the scriptures? That's David's oldest brother. And so when Samuel comes, Jesse brings out his seven sons. Notice I didn't say seven, or eight. He had eight, but he brings out his seven sons. And each one parades across, I guess it's like Miss Congeniality, you know, each one parades across in front of Saul, or Samuel. Sorry, Samuel and Saul sound so much alike. Parade across in front of Samuel, and Samuel says, nope, not him. Nope, not him. Not him, not him, not him, not him, not him. He gets to the last one, and he looks at Jesse, and he says, is that all? Well, any of them. He said, well, we've got one little one yet. He's out with the flocks. And this is kind of the fun side of the story. They go out and get David, and they bring it in, and he said, this is it. There's the king, right there. The youngest of the eight. Well, we may not think about it, but there was a lot of rejection to those seven older brothers. Especially the Iliad, who you know when dad comes home and says, Samuel, the prophet's coming, and he says, there's a king coming from our family. You know he had to think in his own heart that it's going to be the oldest son. Because that's just the way things work in human minds. He had to think that. <clears throat> but it wasn't. <clears throat> so you hear Eliab's rejection come out the way sometimes Iris comes out. Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? Notice he says few sheep. That's a way of making David's job sound menial, pitiful. Who did you leave those few sheep with in the wilderness? 
I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down here just to watch the battle. Gilead was rejected and he was taking it out on David. <laughs> Apparently he still burned with rejection. And he transferred that rejection onto David. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I've done that before. <clears throat> Usually to our own family. We tend to reserve our politeness for the people who are watching us. <laughs> we tend to be meanest to the dogs and the family. <laughs> okay. Stupid dog. Yeah. No. You're right, I have to yell at you. <laughs> Saul doesn't even realize when he says some of the things, though, that he did that he rejects David too. Because Saul replies, You are not able to go out against this. Oh, when, when David gets to the battle, Saul looks at David. And David says, I'll go out and fight Philistine. I'll do it. Saul doesn't even realize when, and Saul likes David at this point. Saul actually takes David into his own home and raises him as his son. That's how David and Jonathan become so fit. Later on, he turned against him. But Saul looks at David, and David says, I'll go out and fight that guy. And Saul's looking around, so well, nobody else will, so I guess we'll give him a chance. But Saul doesn't even realize when he does some things, the rejection that he shows David. He says, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man. And he has been a warrior all his youth. First of all, you're too young, you can't do it. Right? Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. And David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. What's the message Saul is sending David? You can't do it. You're going to have to have all this armor. You're going to have to have all this stuff on. And David has already told him, I'm fighting the same way I fought the, bat of the bear and the lion. So that's simple. I fought a bear and a lion and I was victorious. I'll take some stones and, my, and I'll go out there. Said, no, you've got to have all this on. All that armor was just rejection of David's ability. Goliath tries rejection on David too. We use rejection a lot. We may not realize it, but we do. Verse 42 says, He took David over, or he looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give you fle your flesh to the birds and wild animals. And we call that taunting. And why do most people taunt someone? Because they feel lousy about themselves. Most bullies exist because they like to pull everybody else down so they can be raised up. It's a form of rejection. Remember that side of the, I said there's two sides to the family. Remember the side of the family that included making people feel inferior and insecure? It's exactly what Goliath is trying to do to David. If I can make him feel an insecure and, and, and inferior and insecure, he'll just walk away, go back off. Because that's what everybody else has done for the last 40 days. Goliath also knows the other side as well. If you're not going to perform well, why even try? So for Goliath, who was their premier fighter, it was going to be easier to try to talk him out of even doing anything than to have to fight. <clears throat> David was not a trained soldier. There was no way he could perform his best. Okay? And Goliath knew that. And he thought, if I push that button for David, you're nothing more than what the dogs bring in. You come at me with a stick. It's taunting. And think about what David did. <clears throat> David walked out there, his little throw, tunic or whatever he had, and his slingshot, wound it up, let it fly, and popped right, Goliath right in the head, knocked him dead. As we said last week, he even went over and cut his head off and took it back to Saul <clears throat> to prove to people that Goliath was dead because you couldn't take your cell phone out and take a selfie with a picture and say, hey, look, I killed Goliath. You know, that's not the way it worked. You had to have proof. He did all that. <clears throat> look at Psalm 8 for a second. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold 
against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and animals of the wild and birds in the sky and fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now, David wrote that song. I don't know if he wrote it before Goliath or after Goliath. I don't know if he wrote it as a young man sitting in the fields, shepherd, or when he was sitting on the throne. But it's a beautiful song. And there's many lines in it that are used often in many, many ways. What we need to keep in mind is no matter how bad the rejection is, we always need to remember, just like David did, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. No matter what you're facing, no matter what's rejected you, no matter how much rejection you feel or how bad you feel about it, that statement alone will see us through. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name. Come to the Lord's Supper together as children of our one God. Jesus invites all. Our family, chosen by God, is gathered from west and east and includes everyone from the lowest and the least. Jesus, when he was resurrected from the dead, revealed himself to his disciples. In the breaking of the bread around the table, we see the face of God today as we come to the Lord's Supper. The elements we consecrate through you, that they may be used to cleanse our soul and renew our spirits. Bless the bread and the wine. On the night he was handed over, the night before he was crucified, Jesus gathered with friends for a meal. He took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. Jesus, as we take this bread, let it be a sign of all you did for us and who you are for us. We thank you for this bread of life. Amen. Jesus took a cup of wine and gave it to them to drink, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Jesus, as we drink this cup, let it be a sign for all of us for what you did and who you are. Thank you for bringing us peace that passes understanding. Jesus, through your death and resurrection, you reconcile the world to God, and through your example, you have shown us a way to peace. Give us strength as the people of God to be channels of peace in the world, speaking your peace, living your peace, and always longing for that moment of eternal peace when we shall see you again. Amen. Before we sing our last hymn, one thing, if you don't mind to take your cup out, um, Frederick family will get a kick out of this. It only took COVID. After a hundred some years, we figured out we needed a trash can in the vestibule. Uh, so there's a trash can out there. <laughs> there was never one there before. I don't know what we did and why we didn't have one. But if you don't mind to take your cup, that just uh, helps with the tidiness and then spillage and so forth. We very much appreciate that. Thank you all for being here today. So let's stand and sing, He Hideth My Soul. We are? Yes. Oh, sorry. It's all right. We're going to use a different. Sorry. Different. That's okay. I forgot to tell you. It is all right. If you're wondering, we're going to look at something different because it has five flats. And if you're familiar with reading music, five flats is not fun to play. <clears throat> Basically, you're going to play on every black key except one.
Did you put it in the playlist? Okay. <laughs> I think so. It's not a good one. We'll just change this yeah, we'll just change this. Yeah, we'll change Technical difficulties. Please stand by. Remember that sign that needs to show up on the TV? Mm -hmm. Test pattern. There's not an instrumental version of it. Okay, I guess Carol's going to try. Sorry. <laughs> and you know what? If she messes up, we just don't keep on singing. I don't know if I was going to say, please do this. We probably won't even know she messes up, but she does well. I don't know this camera. There's no introduction, so oh. I don't know. Uh, uh, do the